I came across an article over at Salon, and to be clear, I don't read Salon. This is an important clarification. I was sent it by a friend, and so now we're going to look at it together, but I don't actually like go browsing Salon. That's not really uh, my area, you might say. Okay, but they're making this argument that GPA scores are in some way inherently discriminatory. And so I want to go over this uh, with you guys. So here we are at Salon. It says, in economics, grade restrictions weed out students of color. Uh, again, you've got that, that, that horrendous term, students of color, again, uh, but not colored students because that would be racist, you know, but very huge distinguishing difference here, apparently, somehow. But anyway, they're making this claim that somehow having a grade restriction, having a merit-based uh, limiting factor as to who can enter a certain, uh, I think it's a major, right, is discriminating against black people and Hispanics. That's what they're actually saying. All right, so let me scroll through. I made some highlights here so I don't waste your time on mine. It says, in the summer of 2020, students of color in the University of California Berkeley Economics Department met with faculty on Zoom to talk about tensions that they and their peers were feeling. But Cruz Vital, Vital says the students also aired a grievance about a department policy that on its face appeared to have little, if anything, to do with race. It's not just on its face, it's at all. These scores have nothing to do with race, none whatsoever. It doesn't matter what color you are, your GPA is your GPA regardless. It's simply a measure of how much you know the material. That's it. And nobody should find that offensive or racist. You might actually say that it's racist to assume that there's a racial connotation to that, but that's, that's another topic, perhaps. Anyway, so here we are, and it says that Berkeley's economics department has long required most students to achieve at least a three grade point average in a set of prerequisite courses. In 2019, no fewer than 20 of the top 25 public universities in, in the US News and World Report rankings imposed a GPA restriction on at least one major. All right, and again, this is an economics course, all right? And so they're requiring people to know the prerequisites to it. Statistics, Calculus 1 and 2, Introductory and Intermediate, intermediate Economics. Now, doesn't it seem like you'd want the people who were entering the course to know what they were talking about, to know what they were going to study further, because if they didn't, then they would particularly struggle in this course. Isn't it actually, in a sense, a service to them? Because I certainly think so. Not to drag them through a course that they're unprepared for, and perhaps they should be doing something else, or they should work harder to understand the foundational material before they move on to this. I don't think this is unreasonable. And I certainly don't think there's anything race-related to it, because there simply isn't. And then we, we're going to go ahead and scroll down here. And as we scroll, it says, as co-founder of a student group for underrepresented minorities in economics, she, that is Cruz Vital, she personally knew many of the people who'd fallen victim to the cutoff. What does that have to do with anything? I mean, what does you knowing people who haven't met a certain standard uh, matter, frankly? Like, I know people who haven't gone to college or didn't go to college for economic reasons. Um, what does that mean? I mean, what kind of things can we read into that? We certainly can't read that there's some kind of race-based discrimination going on. I know white people who didn't go to college for economic reasons. Um, that there's nothing racial about that. Some people are poorer than others. Life isn't particularly fair in a lot of ways. But that doesn't mean that there's an institutional oppression that's going on against these black and Hispanic people uh, using GPA. Like, that, that just simply isn't the case. All right, and we're going to go on down here. If it is true that GPA restrictions are disproportionately penalizing black and Hispanic college students, what can be done about that? And there we get into the the attempt to say, okay, well, let's basically get rid of any sort of merit-based uh, system that analyzes whether or not people are capable of entering the course that they're trying to get into. Um, but why? On what basis do we say that that's good for them? Because that's, that's the argument, right? That if they're let into this course, then it will have a positive outcome. But will it? I mean, on what basis do we say that? If you take somebody who's not performing well, in an easier class, and then you put them into what is going to be a, a more difficult class, why do we think they're not just going to drop out or fail? 
why shouldn't they be geared toward or you know directed toward a different course that's better for them or you know that they should simply work more on the foundational materials uh, surely simply getting rid of the standards is not good for them uh, or for anyone else and this is kind of a something that's kind of going on in various different areas of, of academia and also I think perhaps in just society at large there's this desire to get rid of uh, merit-based standards. Uh, there's a guy that I know uh, goes to my church who taught thermodyna thermo thermodynamics as a professor. I know nothing about thermodynamics and apparently I struggle to pronounce it. Um, the same guy now does experiments with nuclear reactors. Now what if he'd gotten the job not because of his qualifications or not because of how well he studied and understood the material, but because of pity or because of abolition of standards. Would you feel comfortable in, in a society that was built like that? I mean, this is just one particular example. I surely wouldn't. Now let's go back to the economics class. These people will presumably be some kind of economic advisors of various sorts to businesses, to individuals, maybe even to public policy. Would you want them if they were bad at math? Would you want to know? Or would you want the guy who was hired because of pity because his skin color was of a certain stripe? And what does that say? Like, if you, if you knew that these lack of standards were in place and that they were vanquished because a black and Hispanics weren't reaching a, weren't reaching a certain threshold, then wouldn't that be, make people more likely to choose white and Asian students and thus result in black and Hispanics doing worse in the real world? Because that would be a logical conclusion for people to come to. Like, should we surrender our societal standards entirely to appease those who cannot or will not perform? Is that moral, more importantly? Because I don't think it is. I don't think it's good for them. I don't think it's good to incite people not to perform at their best. I don't think it's moral to push people into a field that may not be what they ought to be doing. It's not what they're good at. And I don't think it's moral when you consider the outcome that it has on other people, like I was discussing the different people who would end up dealing with them later on in the real world when they're underqualified for their positions. Is any of that moral? No. No, it's not. It's not good for them. It's not good for the world. There's simply no reason for it. This is just essentially reducing standards and doing so by pretending to be virtuous. And there's absolutely no virtue in any of it. Wow, you made it to the end. You have an attention span that's outside of the modern world. But I have more videos, and also if you like them that much, there are ways to support the channel in the links below. Thanks.